Law is white beard and I don't care how you feel about it. Not just because he has a questionable amount of men and one busty on his crew. Not just because you have a gang of pirates suspiciously loyal to one man. Not even only because Law is in line to find out about the One Piece without having to go to Laugh Tale. It's simply because he's him. But how can someone this drippy, top devil fruit, mediocre crew, aiding the future Pirate King with questionable allegiance at times and insane cachet not be the white beard of this era who, who do you want it to be kid you serious for the people that are saying right now why do we need parallels let them be who Oda wants shut up he must be fun at orgies requesting condoms anyway law is now officially recognized by myself and the national he's him organization as the next 1b of the new era. The new era is literally unprecedented and apparently very important. So important that Yonko had to lose their lotion arm, dying to lava, folded by silence, islands are getting obliterated by flying saucers and fleet admirals are stuck inside their towers looking while the kids play outside. But this change was not overnight. No, so many dominoes had to fall to get to this game changing era. But have you ever asked yourself? When the hell did this change happen? Now, if it wasn't for Ask the Question, randomly talking to Roger on that scaffold, would Roger tell us about the One Piece? Did Roger pay that man to do this? Because think about it. They're bringing in the Pirate King, who everybody is shocked by, and then there's this one broke-ass nigga who all he's thinking about is, you know what? That nigga was the Pirate King. He must have had some money. Yeah, <laughs> It's in the midst of all this presumed death. He goes and he asks Roger, hey, all your treasure, bro, wh where'd you put it? And then the rest is history. Now, I don't know who asked the questions family is, but just like Hiyori said, the Kurozomi was born to burn. So is this guy's family and friends if I'm the world government, even his pets. And if it wasn't for this meddling broke ass nigga, we would have gotten away with it. The world would be controlled by us but you can go back in time from what we know because if you could then toki should be erased from the one piece story which he technically was but since we can't travel back through time in the story let's reminisce a little bit and we are in the golden era of one piece the current yonko are big mom kaido shanks and whitebeard and due to whitebeard being somewhat of a yeah. and super aware of his old age and his mortality even when his crew wanted to go save odin he said i'm not fighting that crazy young nigga kaido verbatim a said okay cool cool but next time pops i'm on your head whitebeard agrees and he wipes the sweat off his butt cheek because now he doesn't have to fight that young hungry animal imagine your brother gets turned into an omelet and you worry about the kurozumi and other possibly getting killed in this war they were born to burn <laughs> luffy's a real one okay ace was literally the pirate king's son and it was about to change the world forever and luffy did not give a fuck you got my brother you getting this rubber is you talking about either way whitebeard i think made some slip-ups by not really seeing what was happening around him he got complacent slow and old he became obsessed with preservation young nurses he didn't have that dog in him anymore that's why a kind of helped with that too soon <laughs> Anyway, animosity builds up amongst the crew and Ace feels like Whitebeard should have taken care of Kaido, but here comes this young nigga Blackbeard. Whitebeard excuses this monstrosity because, and I quote, I've got a bad feeling about this. Pussy. Yeah. Which we now know he's all about preserving and protecting family, but what about Thatch's family? Thatch was in and out of the show so quickly, his voice actor was an intern. His drip was to the nasty levels of Childish Gambino on Halloween, but he was a son of Whitebeard, not that one. I don't you love him, man? Ace being hot-headed fire fist goes after darkness fat man and here comes big bad booming new era marine ford solidified white biz legacy not just because of his great stand and chucking niggas off the side of the earth no it's being able to hug a nigga that could stab you because of a misunderstanding that's the type of love you find in shoujo's because if it was me Whitebeard and Ace go on to die and Blackbeard bloviates about how much he's the new man in his era and shit. Shanks shows up and says, hold my beer. Blackbeard then says, maybe it's not my era yet. I'll come back Tuesday. Mind you, after this, he goes on to fold Marco and his band of ruffians while also running away from the current fleet admiral who's locked in a tower. We should start calling him Princess Fiona. Now, kind of because he's stuck in a tower, he's smart. He then decides to move the tower since he cannot move himself. All those tax documents must be filed by someone. This reminds me of Naruto being surrounded by so much paper Work and using clones to play with his family. I'm like, bro, I'm the f***ing Hokage and the hero of the Leaf Village. This shit don't come with an assistant? It's just Shikamaru and vibes? Back to peak peace though, and the Marines have made their move, okay? The Straw Hats aren't waiting, but what is the defining traits of this new era? Whitebeard is gone, Ace is gone. What is the greatest change that occurs due to the changing of the guard? Well, other than the territories being in flux due to the loss of a great man that outlawed slavery, among other things in his territories, 
tits. Tits were different in a new era. Everyone had them, even Smoker. Sanji for a while too. This was a new age. The issue here for the world government was not just about the new upstarts hungry for attention and L's, no. It was about these upstarts being super unpredictable and would literally force two of the old guards, Big Mom and Kaido, to ally. And these niggas didn't even like each other. That's how bad it was. Well, a few things had to happen before this occurred, right? Like overthrowing and capturing the Navy's shysty scientist and then trading him to the underworld demon king who was a warlord, then celestial dragon, then warlord again, who took back his country because, well, he could and then sent it into devastation only to be stopped by Gats and Lucy. Sanji then decides he was homesick and he wanted to see his siblings again, but Luffy, being the dictator of his ship that he is, says no, Usopp knows about that, goes back to retrieve him and beats a young boy at the tender young age of 49, so bad that he asked if he would come back and fight his mama. But with the loss of creepy Flamingo Man, who's now in jail and seemed to be the narrator nigga, the reigns are now gone. Who would win the throne wars? The battle for the current throne is what the new era represents. Options, yes, options. Because there isn't only one crown that we're after, it's two. King of the Pirates, and Queen of the Pleasure Quarter for Robin after chapter 1064. Did you see her? But no, King of the Pirates and King of the World. The Empty Throne is now a thing and Emo would come to be man or woman or it. Has all the power to decide the fate of the world, but does Emu have as much power as it think it has? Can they fight law in the rain? Can they break Bartow's barrier? Can they be more perverted in Sanji? Because that's power. You see, these reinvigorated flames of these young upstarts wasn't just about Roger, right? Whitebeard, the man who could have become Pirate King, the man who sat before the throne, and if he wasn't so driven by family and young nurse told everyone one more time that the one piece the one piece is real it's really beautiful writing that at the end of Ace's life, with Roger's will literally dying with his heir, lit the fire more than the kind who lit Ace's insides and sparked this current generation of pirates to keep going. Too soon? Yeah, <laughs> Law is a spark that will keep the Straw Hats going. If you believe the story on Swallow Island where throat goats like Shachi are made, these band of ruffians are childhood friends, super dependent on their captain, and family oriented like the Whitebeard Pirates. They don't have to get Whitebeard's tram stamp on their back, but they do have to wear the Hard Pirates uniforms. Whitebeard helped Roger attain glory by allowing Odin to join the crew. Law has helped Luffy several times, and vice versa, and the respect they have for each other is one of the best in the series. Law is the Whitebeard of this era, either him or Caribou, there is no in between. Now that's more like it! Start doubting me, I felt lost. I rewrite it.